Salamat pagi, everybody. Welcome to Bali and our Guardians of Gaia New Moon Gathering. Here in early August, just before the Lion's Gate. And we're definitely deep in the pressure cooker of Lion's Gate, which is not just one day. It's a, it's a passage wave that we're passing through. So if you're feeling the pressure... Ask the pressure how you can engage with it to greater serve you, work in your favor, and support your embodiment and evolution. So let us begin with the alignment process. Aligning physical, mental, and emotional bodies. And if you're just landing into the space, you may also want to do this standing with sound, breath, and movement. So you can really anchor it through your physical body. This is what strengthens our pillar as we expand into our multidimensionality. Without it, we're very unstable. So sounding, breathing, moving, aligning physical, mental, and emotional bodies through all-pervading soul, or higher self, whatever terminology you use, and your monadic or galactic self. Thinking a luminous thread from the root, the base, the womb space, down through the floor, the soils, the sands, the bedrock, the waters, into the molten core in the heart of Gaia. And we're going to inhale this energy up with three sounds ah or m mm, through the root the wound space the belly and the heart space so inhaling exhaling with sound ah Activating the Earth Star, one foot beneath the feet, and connecting to the divergent meridians of the planetary body. Sinking yourself with creation through the primordial elements of creation in their pristine form and infinite potential. And inhaling that elemental energy up through your individual pillar so that it may cleanse clear and purify, regenerate, rejuvenate, and recalibrate. All the way up to the soul star, one foot or half a meter above the head, and activating the soul star. And inviting that celestial energies down to meet with the terrestrial energy as we activate our golden colloidal field. Surrendering through the core of source in the heart of Gaia where the new earth architecture emerges from. And then allowing yourself to lean back and soften into that space and feel the support of the planetary body. While we're supporting the planet, the planet is supporting us physically, viscerally, thematically, if we allow it and open to that support. And it revolutionizes the way we are holding space. We are no longer holding space. We are held by this space. And when we are surrendered through the frequency of the new earth in this space, everyone we interact with is also held through this space. And we step out of the me story into the we story. Surrendering to the core of source and the heart of the sun. And the core of source and the heart of the great central sun. Surrendering to the core of source and the heart of the moon, which is new, signifying new beginning today. And the core of source in the heart of Taya, the original moon. And activating our solar and lunar disk within our own system.
and surrendering to the core of source in the galactic center. I'm going to invite you to imagine the core of source in the galactic center in the navel. Actually within our navel. And surrendering into and to homo universalis, our ancient future selves. And inviting all parts of our consciousness into our body, into the bubble, into this here now and moment. Inhaling, exhaling the sound and strengthening and fortifying your own pillar, primarily. This earth walk is a bit like being on a plane. Put your own oxygen mask on first. Do your deep inner work so that you may become a strong pillar for yourself, your family, your communities, and all those that you serve. Inhaling, exhaling the sound, and harmonizing our pillar with the point on the planet where we are standing today. And inhaling, exhaling the sound as we connect our pillars around and through the planetary body from Australasia, Asia, European continents, and American continents. Also, we're going to sound once more and we're connecting to the Arctic and Antarctica and visualizing, feeling, sensing that golden toroidal field becoming one with the golden toroidal field of Gai Galactica. Oh. And the highest possible potential of evolution for our planet and humanity as we pass through this Lion Gate Passage. As I pass you over to Casey. Thank you, everyone. We're going to stay in this consciousness field together and stay in the thread that has been formed around us. I invite you to really tap into that galactic center that's in your navel space at this time. It's your new orientation place from which you can find center among any environment, whether you're on the earth plane or tapped into the higher realms. This is your new docking source, your navigational place, your center for all things. At this time, we are going through an interdimensional shift and we wish to welcome in a bigger consciousness source as we begin to build the bridge back to the Milky Way, through the Milky Way, excuse me, and back into the galactic essence of Andromeda, who is coming back into our field. We welcome this ancient home that we once were connected to each and all of us have a soul memory here, a connection here. As the bridge is being formed, as these new stargates are being welcomed and opened again in the higher dimensions, outside of the 12, going into the 13, up until the 23, these are starting to come into the awareness field now in the higher dimensions. This is the portal shift that we're going through at this time beyond the 12 into the 13 and beyond. This is the humanitarian choice that we're stepping into. This interdimensional choice of the greatest consciousness of stepping back into our homes and allowing those ancient star maps to come back online, the ones that will give us the most 
tangible remembrance of who we are. We are in an exciting time as we begin this shift. And we welcome all the changes to continue to take place among the human bodies as we shift out of the old, allowing the old density, the old timelines, the old karmic loops to come up, to be seen, to be released. We are still in the shifting phase. This new moon brings new opportunities and new choices that we are shifting into. There is so much excitement in the air as we begin to take our steps forward. In our circle today, we welcome in the seen and the unseen realms. We welcome in Galactic Gaia to take her place and feeling supported by her through that new centering we have found. We welcome into the realms all of the planetary bodies that are coming into alignment at this time of Lyra, of Sirius, of Orion, all taking their places. These hold the codes of activation for the human. Stepping into the codes of contract with Lyra, remembering our lion essence of who we are and the higher connection field of the 12 strand DNA that we once started with upon this earth plane. And stepping through the remembrance fields of Orion and Sirius who have been guiding us through every timeline through the earth plane. Every downward spiral that the humans have taken place, there have always been connecting points, guiding us, leading us back. We welcome into the field now, the solar beings of the suns, of our sun, the great central sun. and connecting all the way back to source through these portals of the suns. Remembering that we are solar beings on all levels. Welcoming into the field, the energies of our animal allies, those who guide us in a tangible way. Welcoming into the field, the elemental forces, the waterways, the winds, the fire, the physical aspects that help ground us here through the metals. Remembering that we are all atomic particles that belong to earth. She is our grounding force in helping us to stay here. welcoming into the field the new opportunities that are showing up on the horizon as we shift and change, allowing ourselves to transfer into a new species completely like that of the dragonfly. Metamorphosis is possible on all levels. We just have to choose expansion and growth. And welcoming into the field, the highest consciousness plane of the universal and source systems that allow for the greatest expansion and growth, that allow for the highest connection of all. We are excited for our journey to take place today, so we will step back slowly, taking our place among the circle allowing for all wisdom and knowledge to come forward in this circle today through the unified field of love, through the universal field and the source connection to all that there is. We are all wisdom keepers here. We thank you for showing up and sharing into the field today. If you are ready, we're gonna slowly come back to your human body. We'll add a little gentle movement. Feel yourself anchored in the chair and breathing deeply into your human body. When you are ready, open your eyes and choose to come in fully.
Thank you, Casey. That was really interesting as we went through that process, especially when we did the alignment around the continents of the planet and Antarctica and the Arctic wanted to be called in. Because when I called them in without realizing what was happening, <laughs> I was watching the two hemispheres operate independently and separate from one another. And as we continue through that journey today and the evolution that our planet and therefore humanity and the potential opening to us, what happened was there was something blocked right in the core of the planet that was stopping the energy running all the way through and unifying the two hemispheres, the, the northern and southern hemisphere, which is really interesting. I don't know if there's more you want to elaborate on that. Um, I'm seeing it as like a separation plate, like a complete blockage all the way through. Yeah. Yeah, I've done part of it, but there's more that wants to be done first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perhaps so also uh, between the hemisphere and the brains. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought of that as I was speaking at Lisa. And also... Um, <laughs> The thing that comes to mind is you remember those magic tricks we watched on TV, black and white TV, and put, somebody put a, a steel bolt through and then pull the person apart? That That's what it's looking like. So um, let's see. It, it is interference of nature, this this severing through, through the centre core of the planet. So as we work with light body teams when working with our individual systems, there's also planetary light body teams for those that work with the planetary system. So we're going to call on the planetary light body team for support here. And there's four layers to or put pieces to this puzzle. Like having one set with four um, implants or androids in it that require removal. So we're just going to ask the planetary light body team to please remove these four pieces. One. It's interesting because I'm really feeling it in the solar plexus, not personally, but on a planetary level. It's really in the power center. The second one. And it's really interesting because just, you know, through the night I was woken up to work with my own system and it was working with this on a personal level for this to be able to open today. So understand for those that us. When we, when we come to a point in our evolution where we're consciously working with the planetary system, there is really no separation between the evolutionary process of the planet and our physical human bodies. They are interconnected. And it's it's where our earthwalk becomes a divine dance with destiny because we can't get left behind and we also can't get ahead. It, there's, a, there's a process to it. And, um, and that's what we're exploring now. How does that look now <clears throat> with those four pieces that are out of the way? One. Now it needs almost like a readmission. From Antarctica. And I'm getting taken to Erebus, which is a volcano down in Antarctica that we were working with um, when working with the major planetary volcanoes. So coming down to Erebus now. Uh, 
Um, there's something about the substructure that needs to be activated through the volcano. Like it needs to affect the tectonic plates to allow more movement to take place. Yeah, I'm just looking at myself. There's something that is like the planetary light body team need to work with Erebus now. Because it's not a, it's not like a volcanic plug like we have in our system when our sexual center is blocked or traumatized. It's 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 kind of being screwed in for a reason, and it needs unscrewing now. So if we just ask the team to do their thing with Erebus, just to unscrew, much more gentle when they unscrew it than <laughs> blowing a plug out of a volcano, <laughs> which is really important in relation to the human body and our awakening process, you know. A lot of the neo tantra and sacred sexuality fields are all about kundalini activation. But when you blow that plug out without the community and the support to deal with the fallout, the laundry after the ecstasy, it can be hazardous and it can be critical if it's not supported. So ideally, if we just focus on our embodiment and evolution integrated with our sexual awakening, the process of our kundalini come on, on can be much more graceful and more manageable and more beautiful than pushing and forcing the process. And that's what they're doing here. They're just unscrewing the, the volcanic plug on Erebus. That's done. Anything else? And now, I, what it, I'm not sure what you see, but I'm seeing literally the energy flowing really slowly. And spiraling up through the planetary body. Around the shaft of the core through the center. So it's not actually in the center, it's kind of like spiraling around the shaft. They're showing me the link to some off planet volcanoes. I don't know where Erebus directly connects to, but they're showing me whatever his connection is, is starting to affect the higher. Galactic realms. Yeah, it's connecting not just to other volcanoes in our solar system, but other volcanoes within our Milky Way galaxy. Mm -hmm. And they're in turn connecting back here to Gaia Galactica. And this is how, with through the interconnection, the evolution that's happening on Gaia and with humanity now is affecting all other beings and planets and stars throughout our not just solar system but throughout our galaxy wow it's beautiful it's like a big the big tree of pandora coming lighting back up but through the center of the planetary body right now wow How beautiful. So, well, that's all coming back online in time, divine timing for Lion's Gate and all the other preparations and work so many light workers are, are showing up for right now. It's, it's beautiful. Wondering if, Casey, if you'd like to share what unfolded on your journey across the Pacific when you made your way yeah. from Bali, Indonesia. <laughs> Back diagonally across the Pacific over to San Francisco and North America. Yeah. So one of the last things that I was gifted was those vision of the light cities that were kind of hovering over the ocean when I was in the southernmost point of Bali. And um, as I was flying, I didn't really sleep. <laughs> so I was I was having my attention drawn outside into the ocean realms and I was seeing more of the light cities activate as I was flying over them and they would turn blue and create this um, toroidal field of, of blue activity as we were kind of activating them, both with the codes that I was carrying, the crystal codes and also the oceanic codes that I had received while I was there. So it was needing both the support of the ocean, but also the, the crystal realignment 
uh, and my guides just kept calling it um, crystal wave technology that we were assisting in. So that was fun. And then came into my awareness after I got home that I was still um, by locating to that same area that there was still more learning and more work for me to do. And I was focused on there was a portal that was opened and it felt like a 12th dimensional gateway um, that needed attention that the gate itself had been opened, but the actual um, wormhole technology was not complete, that there was not availability for people to actually travel through or late beings to travel through it, that the gate could fire up, but you couldn't actually use it. Um, so me and a soul sister were diligently working this last week on how to repair that and what that looks like. So a bunch of learning about Stargates and the passageway started to come in. Um, and it felt like that passageway was uh, repaired. And now there's a 13th dimensional Stargate that's coming into our awareness. And it's not a physical location. It's an interdimensional Stargate. Um, and that has to do with the vibrational field that you have to be able to be at a certain vibration, a vibrational match to be able to use it. So there's not like a kind of density attached to it, like the 12, 12 D ones or the ones up to 12 D that we know about. This is a new technology that feels like it's ready to come online because of our shift and our expansion and our growth that we're now able to tap into some of these other stargates and portal ways and passageways to get to different dimensions or locations that we're ready to participate in now. Wow, beautiful. Thank you, Casey. And also without knowing what Casey was leaving with while she was flying across the Pacific, I was also up most of that night. Working with... Um, let me just see. I don't know if you recall the last journey we spoke about and how the Gong Gong Dragon we were working with was connected to four volcanoes. And while Casey was flying across, I was working with 12 more volcanoes and three more Gong Gong Dragons. We're all coming back into connection and the dragons were awakening in that. So right now we literally have four dragons and... 16 of the volcanoes back online and back in connection out of the 12 gong gong dragons that there are and this feels also somehow connected to the underwater crystal cities which i was also weaving with at that time with casey mm. I have a question. Do we think that the crystal cities need to come online before these higher dimensional stargates are able to be utilized? I'm getting a yes. Mm -hmm. They are. It's like we're in the rebuilding phase right now. And I'm getting that the, the 13D gateways have not been online before that they'd been up to the 12 before prior to now on the planet and this will be the turning on of the 13 will is a first for for the evolutionary stage that we're at in Gaia and that's pretty exciting because of course it's not only what it does is it accelerates us into the infinite potential of evolution so the work that's taken me the last, I don't know, 16 conscious dedicated years is like quantumly um, compressed for us to come through the portals. So um, which brings us back to the beginning. If you're feeling the pressure, move, move what's being pressurized to cleanse, move what's coming up from the unconscious to be illuminated and resolved. And if you can't do it yourself, seek support. Don't wallow in it because there's, I was going to say no time, but it's more, 
if your system's offloading and you're not keeping up with it offloading, it can get really uncomfortable and you can get overwhelmed by what's coming up. So just just stay up to date with, with your own housework and, and keep your house clean. And it's much more graceful process. And along with that, is also like the switching out of the body guardians, which is sometimes super important as we're going through shifts and changes. So that might be something that we wish to do as a group. Shall we? Are we going to do that now? Yes. So um, I didn't know much about the guardians of the body consciousness <laughs> until I worked with um, Center for Conscious Ascension. And it was a really interesting process to understand that, you know, places on the planet have their own elemental kingdoms and guardians in the seen and unseen realms. And the sacred sites do. So too does our own body. And I'd been working quite diligently for, for quite a few years before I got to the stage of changing the guardians of my body consciousness. So I went in to check on them. They looked like Snow White dwarfs <laughs> leaning on their picks and shovels, absolutely exhausted and done <laughs> and couldn't wait to get out. And when I changed them over, the way my next team presented to me were like little Smurfs that came in specifically for the big cleanup duty. The ones after that came in like Tinkerbell and Peter Pan. And then the next ones, when I changed them again, came in literally like orbs. I was looking at them at orbs. So as I was raising in frequency, so too were the guardians of my body consciousness. And the next ones operated like a flock of quilia birds. And it was just one big consciousness that could work with my system. So that was my experience and yours will be very unique to your system, whatever filters you're looking through to, to, to meet your, your guidance of your body consciousness. And know if this is the first time that you're doing this, you might end up with a cleanup crew like I did that are in there for a shorter period of time. And it's quite often about three weeks. So if that's the case, this process we're taking you through now you may wish to repeat in three weeks from now as well, towards the end of August, and, and give your body changes of the body consciousness another cleanup. And, and you know, they, they're they really intelligent. They, they show us the intelligence of our physical body, the consciousness of it, and they know what our body needs when it needs it. So if we don't have that direct connection, knowing what our body needs or not sure of what information we're getting is correct, we can actually commune and, and, and speak with, meet with our guardians of the body consciousness. And because each person's system is unique, because each person's body is unique, because each person's point on the planet and climate environment is unique, you will find that you're coming into harmony with your diet, exercise, nutrition, light, dark, and magnetics is going to come online much faster when you're having um, when you're in conference with your guardian, because they will be able to guide you exactly of what your body needs and when it needs it. So, on that note, let us begin the journey. The first thing I'm going to do is invite you within to meet and greet the current team guardians of your body consciousness. Whatever state they are in. They have been with you a long time, so you want to give them a lot of appreciation and gratitude for their service and support, even though you may not have known they were there. And knowing that whatever level or frequency your guardians are on, they have very fine-tuned wisdom 
of what your body needs. So just with this group that will soon depart, checking in with them and asking them, what does your body need? What do you need to change that will most support your embodiment and evolution at this stage? And once again, thanking them for their dedication and service once again and letting them know it's time for them to depart for their own rest, rejuvenation and redeployment. And what we're going to do, we're going to open a portal for your specific team, guardians of your, guardi guardians of your body consciousness, with a one-way filter on so that they may leave now and return to their source of origin. It's a much needed time out. While they're departing, check around and make sure nobody gets left behind in your house, particularly in the first change, because sometimes um, they've been there for so long, they're a bit afraid of the unknown. Just making sure there's no stragglers and nobody gets left behind because it would be very uncomfortable for any being to be left behind when you shift into the next vibrational frequency and team match. And as the last ones leave, closing that portal entirely, sealing it shut, asking the next team to prepare to enter those, the next 10 guardians of your body consciousness who are here to serve you for the next step and stage of your embodiment and evolution according to divine will and divine plan. And that's the filter that's on the next portal to invite in your next team of guardians of the body consciousness and inviting them in now into your meeting hall, into the foyer, and closing the portal behind them, sealing it, making sure it's secure, and taking time to meet and greet the new team, guardians of your body consciousness. They may also have a advice for you. And you may wish to ask them if they're here long-term or just for a three-week or so cleaning period, cleansing period. And while you're with this team, what you might like to do is set up a schedule, a time to check in with them so that you can have regular daily communication. And it may be in the morning with your morning meditation or practice, in the evening before you go to bed. And you may also want a space in the middle of the day around lunchtime. It's up to you. It's something that you are aware of, that your team's aware of, and that you make a regular date to check in on how best to support your body for your current stage of embodiment and evolution. This turning over of time does not need to be cataclysmic on our planet or within our own system. It can be an integrated part of our Earth walk.
And once you're complete coming back fully into the present moment, you may wish to make any notes of the messages you receive from your first team or this next team. And remembering to make space, space in, in your daily routine for that extra level of self-love and self-care. Because our self-love and care is a real foundation stone of our embodiment and evolution. When we have, when we love ourselves enough that we no longer compromise ourselves, it really accelerates the evolutionary process. Not going to compromise our love or truth. There we go. Anything else from you, Casey, before we check in with Lisa, who's joining us from a very magical point in Sweden where she's just relocated? As we were doing our Guardians of Our Body Consciousness, I was just tapping into Gaia to see how often the Guardians of the Sacred Spaces get transitioned out or when the changeover takes place for them. And I was asking specifically because we're coming upon a portal date if it happens on the portal date. And the answer I got was no, but that with every shift in consciousness that humanity takes or Gaia takes as herself in her expansion fields, that's when the shifts take place, right? So um, we can sometimes use markers of like the solstice or the equinox for big shifts and changes that the earth is going through. So sometimes on those specific dates and times, they will have a switch over, but mostly it's when humanity takes that next leap. Or when Gaia herself is ready to make that next shift into her evolutionary faith. That's beautiful. Thank you for tuning in and checking in with that. And it also reminds me, you know, we're on a cross-quarter point right now between a solstice, the June solstice and the September equinox. We're in the cross-quarter point of La Masse in the north, the Harvest Festival at the end of summer, and in block in the Southern Hemisphere which is when the seeds of spring are beginning to sprout. So it's a really important time when we're syncing ourselves with the cycles, seasons, and spirals of our evolutionary process, that we're very mindful of these while we're meeting as guardians of Gaia on our new moon and full moon cycles. We also have the eight, the two equinoxes, two solstices, and four cross-quarter points of the solar cycle and next month in September we'll also be opening source portal uh, community subscription for those that are ready to sync themselves with our galactic cycles through the Mayan calendar and there'll be more information on that coming out so for those that are interested please make sure that you're on the Earthwalk Global mailing list if you would like more information on that from there you can select if you would like to receive information on the solar cycles and i'm soon to send out the the mass in block newsletter the lunar cycles will eventually have guardians of gaia uh mailing list for our meetings and recordings and the source portal which will be opening in September, around September equinox time, depending upon the May encounter, it would probably be just after September equinox. And there's also choices if you want to learn more about the sacred journeys. There is five sacred journeys in 2025 where our community will be gathering at different points on the planet, including, including Antarctica and Aotearoa, New Zealand. Zambia for a rewild experience, rewilding experience in the Lower Zambezi National Park where I used to live. A sacred journey through South Africa and connecting with the Nile Meridian, which is space, the Rose Line, which is time, and the Kalahari Sand up in the Cedarberg Mountain, who are the oldest extraterrestrial race on our planet who hold the codes of creation prior to manifestation. And then in September equinox next year, we have a soul family 
family journey through Egypt, through Kemet, all about our ancient future and it's open to families and all who feel resonant in the field. And all that information you're going to find there, depending on what uh, newsletters you subscribe to on the list. So on that note, let us check in with Lisa, who's in Sweden in the wee hours of the morning, who got woken up to come and join us. Wee hours of the morning, and it's still light, the joys of northern summer. <laughs> Thank you for being with us, and please tell us about this magical land. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's so funny that I woke up by myself and and uh, that the sun is just rising. Uh, and when I went out of this big old house that I'm renting uh, now and moved in this week, uh, this uh, <laughs> the guardian of this place, this cat, this black panther cat, <laughs> uh, just came... <laughs> rushing in here do you see her him yeah this is simba yeah he has so but, but i love that just... simba simba yeah, the simba. the kisahili name for lion yeah and this is a panther yeah uh yeah which uh and um yeah it's magical it's just look here it is magical. I was Lisa sent me photos of this land, and it felt yeah. very powerful. Yeah. And here's and very this familiar. is a, this is um um it, it's very old Viking land, and it's in an island just outside of Stockholm, and it's the like the origin of the Vikings. <laughs> they lived here, and it's still um. A very uh, yeah um i do not know what to say do you see this tree it's like a it's like a church like do you see this wow and as lisa speaks about the origins of the vikings if we go back even further a lot of the vikings emerged out it of Sumer and armenia so a lot of the roots of those with Scandinavian bloodlines carry the ancient bloodlines out of out of Armenia and Sumer. And it yeah. feels very relevant to this land. So we can tune mm. in and see what else yeah. this land yeah. would like. And, to. And, the, and, and this old house that I'm renting, it's like, it's more than 300 years old, 300 square meters and I do not know why I came, but I had help checking in and that it has connection to Giza and Avalon and and that there's something hidden here that's to be activated. Looking from the outside, what I'm seeing is three galactic gateways on this land and three inner earth gateways on this land. And this these gateways were not compromised when everything was closed on the planet. We've already spoken. Some were closed because it was a rush, and they, but they were managed to close down securely. Others got compromised. And it feels like these gateways on that land um, were closed and secured without being corrupted, and they're ready to reopen again. Hmm. Yeah. Seen by grace. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's ask the planetary light bodies team to come in now. They'd like to open the three galactic ones first, and then they'll open the three uh, inner earth ones. So let us begin by opening, reopening the three galactic gateways. One. And three, and reinstating their guardians, or not their guardians, the guardians, 
that are a compatible match for the current frequency, vibration, and purpose of these, this reopening. Done. And now um, the light body team will reopen the inner earth gateway. And three. And reinstating or instating the guardians of these three inner earth gateways. How does that feel on the land? Mm. He's calm and here comes bird, birds flying over quietly mm. over the house. Um, mm. That is very um, graceful. How's that feeling? And Casey, I wonder if you've got anything to add there. Um, they're showing me some like royalty codes associated with that land. Like when you're doing the activations that came through is the shape of like a crown, which was fun. Yeah. And, and this is um, the island where the king that started Sweden, you could say, like um, 500 uh, yeah, in the 1600s. Um, and, and this house actually has one fireplace from his castle and uh, and the current royal family is living like 15 20 minutes from here <clears throat> and um, it's um, yeah it's a lot of <laughs> of that yeah. energy too and it is a lot of distortion around that. It's, so it it's th this land is called uh, Black uh, Sea. The the land of the Black Sea. There's a purity in the original sovereignty coding here, and this is really important for obviously the reclamation of sovereignty between each individual, each nation and each nation land um, on the planet during this time of embodiment and evolution. So there's something that needs to be done here with these um, sovereignty codes and their purity and infinite potential. And it's it, they're going to be... Um, Shared. I'm getting the word proliferated. <laughs> Pro they're, they're getting di distrib distributed, proliferated, proliferated through the waterways. Interesting. I'm getting the be beginning in the Black Sea. What? what? The, the beginning? Beginning in the Black Sea. So there's a redistribution of the original sovereignty clothes. It's going through the waterways, obviously, of our planetary bodies, but also through the inner Earth waterways. It's going right through the planetary body. It's almost like they were being held in a little cache, and that cache is opening, and the encoding of the sovereignty, the raw sovereignty codes are being redistributed. And those that are going to really notice um, these codes are those that are on their path and are sensitive and attuned to it. It's almost like it washes over others without noticing. But those that are actually on their path and, and have attuned their sensitivity and recalibrated their systems are going to be very aware when this, this enters their field. 
Hmm. Here comes the blackbird. <laughs> I'm wondering if there's anything else you want to contribute to that, Casey. Um, they're showing me that they're being anchored into the new timelines. So that when we're creating from that space, that they will be then a part of the new history lines that are going to go forward. And I was wondering if this was like connected to some of like the Knight Templar stuff, but I'm not really getting that so much. But there is something about that past it, night. Past yeah, life. I, I, I think that the Vikings uh, who lived here were the ones that um, uh, went over to Scotland and became the Knights Templars. Like this, it, like in the, uh, like in the um, 800. Uh, um, they, they uh, actually uh, met uh, with AC. Yeah, the, I'm the, doing that. They the, met the, with this, the Knights Templars. Yeah, and, and this was like where they started to conquer and, and, uh, and uh, install the patriarchal timeline that we've been in. Somehow. This uh, conquer and divide. So, and... so for, what for the, our call today, I'm just checking on that. No, they're wanting us to do something about it today. Universal Federation Light, please over light security be on standby. We have six galactic that are anchoring this uh, outdated patriarchal paradigm that require eviction and yeah. evacuation today. And perhaps also and then, the economic system somehow, like that's part of it, and it'll all come yeah, unraveling when we like, unravel this into theory. Yeah. Sweden was the first country started a central bank, for instance. Um, you can keep talking if you've got more information to share. I'm just going to do the housework with the team. So we're just going to be removing the first Trinity Gateway. Of galactics one, two, and three. And we're moving the second Trinity Gateway, galactics four, five, and six. And this, you're right, this is going to release the control of the monetary systems mm. and the redistribution of wealth and the free flow and overflow of abundance. So it's a really good time for everyone to address any issues they have around money and poverty consciousness. Money is an energy of exchange and creation. And when we come into relationship of money as finance, at its infinite potential and purity without the overlays, we can tap into our relationship with money and restore money as lover, as Gaia is lover. Money is a form of energy for which we are here to support the creation and birth of our new earth. How we relate to money and at what level of consciousness we relate to money will define our experience of it. And any beliefs we have around money or our family have had around money that we have inherited. So as we pass through Lionsgate, I would, I suggest you put that on your platter. <laughs> to be diffused and reinstated. Just before this call, I brought through just like a one sentence and it was about the new abundance codes and the redistribution of overflow is what it wanted to be called. 
<laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's very much it's it's not um it's not just a redistribution of wealth. We're actually tapping into beyond that into overflow. What happens when we are in overflow? And this is why we've had to restructure business from the pyramidal system into a toloidal field. So that everyone benefits, the whole community benefits, the environment benefits, and it continues to grow and multiply and support in a very natural and organic structure. Wow. What a day of preparation, planning, and um, rolling out the red carpet for the Lionsgate Passage this year. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you Thank for you. all of those who have joined our journey and the 100 or so people that that are watching the recordings right now. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your service. And that, thank you for your commitment to your own embodiment and evolution and self-love and care. Wow. Anything else before we hand you over to Casey to bring closure for our journey today? Just thank you from, <laughs> from me and the cat here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lisa, for, for answering your early morning wake-up call in Sweden to be able to join us today and share what your land needed to share today. I'm mm -hmm. excited for your journey with that land, mm -hmm. personally and professionally, and the potential that it holds for you. Maybe they mm -hmm. realize within mm -hmm. and without. Yeah. Thank you for being here with me. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Heading over to Casey. Thank you, everyone. We'll just take a minute to thank all of those who participated in the circle today from the higher realms, from the realms of the unseen and from our, our light body teams that were here to support the shift in the human vessels as the guardians of our own body consciousness are ready to be shifted and changed through this transition time. And also the light teams to come and support on the planetary work that is always showing up when it needs to, ready for evolution and change at the right time. Grateful for this circle today, for everybody to participate in the ways that show up for them, that we are all puzzles to the bigger piece, that we all have those puzzle pieces that go together with our gifts that come and interlock and amplify when we're in the field of connection of that heart field and connected to all things that are ready to come forward and be shared. And we are so grateful and looking forward to all the shifts and changes about to take place on the horizon as we stay in the energy of the new moon, the excitement for what is to unfold knowing that everything comes perfectly at the right time for what we are ready to receive that we just need to say yes and accept and receive and take it on to the next level. That with every choice is given an opportunity for growth and expansion. That every choice asks for more stepping into the field of the unknowing, into that trust field. But where much is given, much is received. And with responsibility comes abundance in all ways and shapes and forms. We will thank Galactic Gaia for showing up today and for the planetary shifts that happened. We will slowly make our way back from this unified field into our own individual pillars that we may be anchored into the earth plane as we step forward in our earth walks today. For those of us who are ending our days and for those of us who are just beginning, we are all connected in this field of oneness. Stepping all the way back into our solo pillars will start to add some gentle movement into the human body, anchoring back into our chairs, our seats, to the earth, wherever we are located, breathing deeply into the body and choosing to come all the way back in today. Thank you, Casey. And as we arrive, 
and return fully intact onto the earth plane, it feels important to mention to you that when we gather on the full moon in two weeks from now, it, we have um, provisionally booked another meeting with Madeline Walker, who you may remember created the Guardians of Gaia card pack. She joined us with Weaving with the Whales about six months ago when we were in South America. She will be walking in Egypt during this Lionsgate and would have just returned to the UK. And we are planning to meet on Tuesday 20th of August at 9.30 UK time. So that will be 10.30 European time, European Central time, and hmm, 4.30 Bali time, Indonesian time. So just letting you know, if you would like to join us on that gathering, keep that in mind, put it in your diary, or let us know your WhatsApp number so that we can keep you informed once that's confirmed. Love and gratitude to everyone. Thank you for sharing this journey, and take good care as we surf the waves of change through the Lionsgate in this powerful portal. And remember your lion self and your heart fire and the courage of really claiming that aspect of our soul essence because it is our heart fire the fire of love that brings change much love and see you all in a couple of weeks time take good care